Welcome back everybody to Aeropostale and we are going to continue. It is about to be my third turn and well, you know, Jen had just exploited a route to great effect, got all those points. I think it's time, since I opened up my own route, I should probably exploit it before time is up. So let's go on ahead and do that. I am going to exploit, which means, as always, I got to spend a pilot, and I got plenty, and I got to use a plane. And I think I'm going to use Fatty here because he can actually carry two things as opposed to my other available plane because this one's already gone. So this plane can only carry one. Fatty can carry two. Now, he unfortunately uses two fuel instead of one, so I'm going to have to spend two of it. But carrying two items is worth it. So let's bring him over here. And I have both these, so I could go in either direction. I could come over here, which would let me put another cube in my hometown. But I instead am going to fly from here to here, from Amsterdam to Toulouse. And I am going to complete. Oh, 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 okay, I'll worry about that. Later. I'm going to complete this contract that I opened up earlier. Which, if I can deliver one, um, what do you call it, one passenger, I get two points. And you'll notice my fatty is the only one of these three planes that can deliver passengers. So if I had, um, if, if I didn't have, although actually, yeah, 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 it's even better. There are two contracts available here in Toulouse. The one that started, which is deliver anything and get a point. And then the one I created, which is deliver a passenger specifically and get two points. And now, since my fatty can carry two things, he will carry the passenger to score the two points for this. And let's say he's carrying post, which means he'll score this. He has completed two contracts in this town instead of one. And that means I get to put two cubes here. And I am really starting to muscle in on Jen's hometown now. And since I completed both contracts, I get two points. Uno, dos. So, Jen's still way ahead, but now here's the thing. Toulouse has a maximum size of eight cubes. We're at seven cubes now. If I put another cube in by doing another delivery, then we're tied. If I put another cube after that, I start squeezing her out. Now, that hasn't happened yet, but it's likely to. Let's see, is that right? Oh, I've gotten myself mixed up now. All right, I just was able to, uh, I, I put two down and then I put two more down. Right, right. So it's four to three. And so I'm starting to take over Jen's home territory. So that was my third. And now the four, everybody gets their fourth and final action. Now, Jen has no more pilots. So she can no longer create stops, you know, open up new, uh, um, you know, shipping lines. And she can't exploit existing ones because all her pilots are in use. She doesn't need to go to the meeting because she never signed up for that in the first place. So, what could she do? She could do logistics. That's the main thing she do. She says she's down to two fuel. If she does logistics, she gets to look at what the plus two is and she could add plus two. So she's back up to four. So that would be really nice. Oh wait, oh wait, oh wait. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. So she could do that. Because she needs more fuel to be able to fly more in the future. And if you don't do logistics, you're just not gonna get it. She could reorganize her fleet, which right now would mean she could put this bonus on a different plane. Or, let's uh, see. So if she does that, she goes up to two. She could do something quite nasty, though. She could recruit. Now, remember how I said when you do the recruit action, that means you get a rookie, and there are no rookies? Jen could steal one of my rookies. Now, it would cost her the difference between us in logistics. Jen's sitting at two, I'm sitting at one. So the difference is one. It would cost Jen one fuel, and she could get another pilot. And she would love another pilot because she has four planes. Having four pilots for four planes, that's pretty nice. But here's the thing, later on then, she would still have to do logistics because she's running out of fuel. And at this level, if she does plus two, she would only go up to three. If she's here when she does her logistics, she goes up to four. If she loses two, she'd get plus three and go up three. So does she want to steal a pilot from me at the expense of one additional fuel? Yeah, with that, she's gonna do it. Jen is gonna recruit and she's actually gonna take from me, this is her last action, stole a guy, and so she has to make up, so she now has the same amount of resources as me. And that means I basically wasted an entire turn recruiting that guy in the first place. Because remember, I, I could have done that, or I could have set a world record and prevented Jen from being able to do delivery, but then just went ahead and stole the guy from me anyway. But on the flip side, um, 
She did at least lose one fuel. So I guess my wasted turn at least made her waste a fuel. Because if I hadn't done that, she would have been able to recruit that guy for free. Oh well. So that was Jen's last move. And now it's time for my last move. Now I still have one more pilot and one more plane. I could um, exploit a route one more time. I could do another delivery, fulfill another contract, and get another cube here and get some more points. But here's my problem. And you'll know, get closer and closer to pushing Jen out of Toulouse. My problem is, though, I committed to going to the air show. And this is my last chance. If I don't do meeting, you know, send a guy to the air show, my last pilot, if I don't do that, I will, well, one, I won't win the air show, so I won't get the big bonus. But two, the penalty is I will not be able to enter the air show next round. And now you don't need to enter the air show. You could play the whole game and never do it. But remember, I really wanted to win for, I wanted to get first player away from Jen. So my last action is going to be to go to the meeting or the air show and put a guy there. So that's it. We have finished all of our four actions and now we do meeting resolution or more excitingly put on an air show. And as you can see, hey, I'm the only one who showed up. So I automatically win. What do I win? I get the first player marker and I win first place gets the first player marker and a plus three logistics chip. This means in the future, when I do a logistics action, not only do I get what it says on the board, but I get three in addition. So I can make a ton, I can get a ton of fuel now for winning this thing. And if, if Jen had come along and she'd been in second place, she would get a, a plus two chip. Third and fourth place with more players get nada. Now here's the way it actually works. It's a dice roll. We have a one through six die. Everybody rolls the die. And if they're playing with, if they're flying with a rookie, and you can see I sent a rookie. If you fly with a rookie, you just get whatever you get. But if you sent an experienced guy, you get plus one to your roll. And if you if you sent a legendary guy, there are five legendary pilots in the game based on real world pilots. You get plus two. So you, if you send your legendary, you significantly up your chance of winning and coming in first place or second. But since it, as it is, we don't have to roll the dice anyway. Although if I had, I would have rolled a four, and everybody would have had to beat the four. So you know. Even with a rookie, you could win. And so I came, I got my first player marker, and I got my plus three logistics chip, and that was that. So that was meeting resolution, and now maintenance and recovery. Now what that means is everybody who worked now has to go into maintenance or recovery. These two guys who opened a line and did some delivery, they come down here and they get to rest. Next round, they can't be bothered because they're on the Barker Lounger. Same for this guy. All three of my pilots are now going to be all tied up next round. Also, I pull my planes back and they come down on this side. So next round, I will not have these planes. I only have one plane and no pilots since Jen stole one from me. So Jen's got to do the same thing. Three of her pilots come down here, but the one she stole from me stays. Okay. And her two, two of her four planes are now in the maintenance bay, including her really super one. Okay. So that's maintenance and recovery, and now scoring. You'll notice there is a gold, which is four points, a golden wing for Europe, one for Africa, and one for South America. Let's do Europe first. Who has the most cubes? That would be me. I just scored a gold. Hooray! Africa? Well, that would be Jen. She's the only one here. So she just scored her second gold, and nobody's in South America, so that's world domination. Now, in the case of a tie, if, you know, say I hadn't moved in on Jen over here at all and we were tied at 3-3, then the tiebreaker is how many stops you have. And as it happens, um, or is that right? It's how many stops, isn't it? And tiebreaker, let's see, I've almost, we almost never seen a tie, is the number of stops you've got. And um, if tied after that, no cubes. Right, okay. So that's that. Right. So. We have finished the first round, moving on to round number two, reset. And this weather that got revealed, which prevented Jen from being able to put another cube, this one now gets replaced with new weather. Ah, smooth sailing, clear skies. If you make a delivery across the Pyrenees, you get to add one additional cube. And that might be nice. Jen might want to start making some deliveries from Casablanca back to Toulouse so she can push back and get control of her city again. And this lets her get plus one when she does it. So that was nice. We haven't revealed weather for any of the others, so that's it for the weather. And now, once again, everybody has to commit to the race. And everybody has to reveal at the same time. 
Let's see here. And this, I think I won the last one. I've already got one chip. I'm happy with that. I'm going to say nothing. I'm not going to go. And Jen also. So nobody's going to the race. See, because it's expensive to go to the race. It's great to get these plus three chips, but you give up um, you know, a, a, you know, a, a sizable portion of your flight crew, you give up one of your four actions, so it's expensive just to get one of these chips in first player. So both Jen and I are going to pass, which means we, there will not be any competition during the meeting resolution phase. And now we can start doing actions again, and hey, I'm first! Hooray! Okay, now, here's a problem. I have no pilots, and there are no pilots to hire. Jen's got one, though. And here's the thing, uh, if I could, I would steal that back from her right now. But for me to be able to do that, I have to have more logistics than Jen, and we're tied. So I cannot steal this pilot from Jen. So that's kind of a bummer. So I think my first action is going to be quick recovery. And what that means is I take one of the guys on the Barker Lounger, and I bring him up here. And so they're ready to work again. So I actually have a pilot, and I can uh, do some shipping and stuff this turn. Okay, so that was my first action. Jen's first action, she can start delivering because she's already got a dude. But her super plane that lets her get gold wings, that plane is gone. Because, you know, it's in. So if Jen wanted to, she could do quick maintenance, which, and now, oh, this is really interesting. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, Jen will do quick maintenance, kind of like quick, my quick recovery was, I got to recover one of my pilots. Jen's still got a pilot, so she doesn't need to do that. She's going to do quick maintenance, which always costs one fuel. But it gets you a plane back, Jen will get her super plane back. Okay, so that was Jen's first move. On to the second move. Now, I'm scared because I have more logistics than Jen does. Oh, wait, oh no, 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 it actually, no, this is good, this is good. Right, I have more logistics than Jen. So if I want to, my second action could be to recruit and steal Jen's pilot back. And suddenly, Jen's got no pilots to fly. What the heck? Let's. Let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's, let's do that. So, now I've got two pilots but only one plane. That was my second action. And now Jen, she was about to fly and score another big, but now she's got to wake up another one of her pilots. Now, the interesting thing is she's got this experienced guy. She'll, she'll make him recover. Oh, wait, oh, wait. Shoot, shoot, shoot. I totally forgot. Only experienced and legendary guys can recover at all. Right, right, right. So, okay, I totally forgot about that. So, let's start over again. Start this whole round over. Um, let's see. My first thing was, my first thing was a, re a recruit, which I couldn't do because. Oh yeah, no, my, I couldn't do because we didn't have the same because we, we were both the same. So, and um, right, I cannot recover any of my pilots. I just there's nothing I can do about that at all. So I got to look at what else can I do instead. I could recover one of my planes, but I can't fly with it. Um, I can do logistics. You know what? Actually, I think I will have gone to the. Uh, no, I guess I won't because I'm not going to have a pilot to do it. Ugh. All right. Now here's the thing, if I do logistics, then I will have more logistics than Jen, and then I could snatch her only pilot. But she's got this guy, she's gonna fly with him. No, actually, because she, all right, sorry, because she has to repair her ship, yeah. So I'm gonna do, my first action was logistics. And, so I'm at two, so that means I get two more. And if I want, I could pay three more, but I'm not gonna do that right now, I'm only gonna go up two. That was my first action, logistics. Jen's second action, she, can, uh, she knows why I did it, because she knows I'm going to try and steal that pilot from her, because otherwise I can't do anything. But in the meantime, she, she's okay with that, because she's got the... Well, let's see, so she hasn't recovered this guy. So if she wants to use this pilot, she better use it now. And so she could. Yeah, what the heck? She's going to... Her first thing is not going to be recovery or re get her old ship, her plate. She's going to use this pilot really quick. So she is going to exploit. Or is she going to exploit, or is she going to explore and find something new? Well, she doesn't want to get pushed out of her hometown. But she would love to push further over here into new territory. So if she creates a stop, but if she exploits, she can get more points. And with this, with this guy and one of, um, you know, and this, she could fly from back home. She could deliver one thing and get, a, and get two cubes. That's what she's going to do because the weather is, is favoring it. So Jen is going to exploit, which costs her one pilot, this plane. She's flying back home. And that plane cost her one fuel. Okay, so she's totally broken out. So she flew back home, thusly. And so now she, what is she going to do? She is going to, um, 
Right, right. She's going to fulfill a contract. That thing only carried one, so she gets she fulfills a contract, which gets her one point, and gets her normally it would be one cube, but thanks to the weather, it gets her two cubes. And so now we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so to make room, she pushed one of mine out. Okay, and now that means Jen has majority in Europe and in Africa, and I am in trouble. So that was Jen's second action. Now on to my third action. Right. No, no, no. I'm sorry. On to my second action. My first action was doing stuff. And now, unfortunately, Jen made her rookie go away. I can't steal him anymore. Hmm. So, that's right, right? Because you can only steal rookies. And you can only steal them if they, you can't steal them because they're in the air, basically. So, I've got three more actions to do, and I have no pilots and none to recruit. And that's a big problem. Let's see here. So without pilots, what can I do? Well, I can recruit a pilot if any were available. I could do more logistics. I could spend this whole turn just slowly filling up. I could do a quick recovery, but again, you can't, you can't recover rookies. That's the part I forgot. That's, that's right, right? Yeah. Quick recovery. Only seasoned military pilots can recover. So I can't recover. And um, I could do maintenance, but you know what? My planes, they're going to repair themselves at the end of the turn anyway. So I think my second action will just be another logistics, and I'll get one more. So I'm slowly filling back up. Ugh, no pilots, that really sucks. Okay, Jen's turn. Now, her second turn, she will go on ahead and do a quick recovery and get her experienced guy because I cannot poach an experienced guy as much as I would like to. Third turn, all right, all I can do is just more recovery. This is gonna be a turn all, because I did not save myself any pilots. Or more to the point, Jen stole my last pilot because, ugh. And I, you know, and I did not get a chance to steal it back because of the way the fuel worked out. Oh, that was a killer. So I, I did some more logistics and Jen's third turn. She's got a pilot. She's got her, her or, no, her third turn is she is going to do quick maintenance and get her super plane back. And now for my fourth and final turn, this was a turn of nothing but uh, logistics. Ouch. And I, but I've still got my plus three that I can use later in the game when I need it in a, in a pinch. And I'm fully fueled up, so my third round will be much more successful. Because all these guys are going to reset, as will my planes in the third round. In Jen's last round, now she can do another exploit. And she can use her experienced pilot and um, her really good plane that carries two things. Um, and it's going to be post and a passenger. And she's going to do another delivery over here to Casablanca, successfully finish this. She gets to put two cubes down because of the good weather, and she gets another gold. Boom, so that's very nice. Um, oh wait, 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 no, 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 she doesn't do that, because she's out of fuel. She can't do this. Shoot, right, because she's out of fuel. So let's rewind, sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, so she doesn't use him. Now that means, there was no reason for her to even wake these guys up because she wasn't going to get a chance to fly. Well, no, actually, that's not true. She could have woken him up. And then for her third action, instead of recovering this plane, for her third action, she could have done logistics, which would getting her one, two, three fuel. Right. And then for her fourth, for, you know, that was her third action. So she didn't recover. Right. Okay. And so for her last action, she has a pilot. She has one plane free. Which is, ah, but the one plane free she got cannot cross lines. Oh, but you know what? She'll use it anyway. She will use this. It costs her two fuel because it's her fat, slow one. And she'll fly from Casablanca over here to Tangiers using her experienced pilot. Okay. And so this was creating a new stop. That was her fourth action um, instead of doing another delivery. And so she's flying over here. It costs her two fuel, which she just spayed. She doesn't have to worry about crossing lines or anything like that. So she gets to reveal and she, oh, wow. Okay. Well, she gets four cubes. This is interesting. One, two, three, four. So that fur further puts her in a hugely dominant space over here in Africa, but she's got to pay a price for that. Um, this little icon here means that she has a choice. She either cho chooses to lose, um, her pilot or two logistic points. She has to choose one of those two. That was a bad bit of luck. And now here's the problem. She can't lose two logistic points. She only has one, 
So that means she just lost her pilot. Her seasoned experienced pilot just died. Ouch. Yikes. And that, that is not good at all. Wow. That was a big crushing blow, in fact. Okay, well, that's kind of a bummer. That kind of evened things out a little bit. And so that was the end of the second year. We both done our four actions. I spent the whole year refueling because I didn't have any pilots. Jen took a chance and it blew up in her face. Wow. Although, now here's the interesting thing. Jen has, oh, look at this, I forgot. Jen, by the way, has five cubes here. The total storage space um, in a two-player game, because you can modify, there can only be five cubes here. That means Jen is the only person who's filled up all five cubes. That means she has created a monopoly in Casablanca and no one can ever deliver anything else there again. And in fact, this strip will never open up because I can't deliver there. So Jen got a monopoly and she's very close to getting a monopoly in Tangiers. So that's really cool. She can really control this whole section of Africa. But on the other hand, <laughs> she just lost her, you know, her experienced pilot. And basically the uh, world's been reset. So that was the end of this. Uh, we've done all our actions. We do the race. Nobody entered the race. And um, so we skipped that part. And so now, relax. All my pilots come back, as do my planes. Jen's two planes come back. And as do these two pilots. This guy, though, he goes into resting. And Jen's other two planes go into the maintenance bay. And we're ready to start the third round. And while that second round wasn't very good for me, I'm in a pretty good position for the third round because I've got three pilots, three planes, I'm totally ready to go, I am totally fueled up, and on the flip side, Jen is totally broke, um, only has two pilots, and only has two planes at the ready. So she had a much better second round, but I am going to have a much, much better third round, and starting with choosing, and I don't think I'm going to bother, I'm not, I mean, I've, I've got plenty of fuel, I don't need to worry about, but I think Jen is going to commit. She is going to actually race this turn so that she can get first player back. Okay. And um, you know what? What Jen should have done? You know, I think I'm going to stop right there because you've seen a little bit of everything. But let's rewind a little bit. Remember when Jen um, flew her fat plane over here, discovered this place, and ended up losing her guy? Now, she had a choice. When she landed her, her big slow plane in Tangiers, she had a choice. She could, you know, reveal this and, um, you know, hopefully it would benefit her. Although, as you saw, it really destroyed her. But whenever you land, the you know, you have one opportunity. Every time you create a new strip, a new landing strip in Africa, you have the opportunity to, instead of taking this one, just remove it. You don't get to look ahead of time. You just remove it and instead put down your legendary strip. And what that means is the pilot who flew from here to here gets upgraded from a, um, an experienced guy to one of the five legendary pilots. So if Jen had done that on the last turn, she would have only gotten to put one cube, and you can see there's no contract in Tangier she can do. She only puts one cube down, but instead of losing her experienced guy, he gets upgraded to, to um, you know, Jean Mermont or uh, Henri uh, Guillemont, or I don't know how to, why am I even trying, or, you know, uh, Marie's uh, Bastille, all these famous flyers. So Jen could have taken this and the token, and that meant Jen would actually have three um, novices and a legendary. Legendaries are very, very cool. They add plus two to every roll, um, you know, both when you're competing in the air show and when you're trying to do world records. And they have a one-time special bonus of canceling the effect of weather cards or, you know, different ones. Her special bonus is gain additional plus two when going for a record. So Marie's here can get records much, much easier than anybody else, although she can only do it once in the game. And you can see the higher records are gets to be kind of expensive, but they're worth points and lots of really cool ships. All right. So if Jen had done that, she would not have lost her guy. I think that would have been the smarter move. And then this plane would have come here and um, this would have come down here to rest and relax. Right. And so there we go. So I think that would have been a, a smarter move for Jen to make rather than taking the gamble and ending up having a, a, having a pilot die, which was very, very bad for her. Right. And so we start the third round. I've, I am ready to go. I got a whole bunch of stuff. I think 
I'll probably start trying to break some world records, take this thing away from Jen so that she can't keep scoring all those golds, because that's not work, doing very well for me, get it for myself, start moving into Africa, so I can move into Tangiers and get a majority over her, um, or I could skip it and cross two lines. If I can get a better plane, I would need a plane, say, like this one or this one that can cross two lines. Um, and, you know, and remember, the first player to cross two lines gets a point. Plus, nobody has gotten the points for being the first to deliver a parcel because Jen hasn't opened up any parcel lanes either. So I've still got a lot of options. If I move into Africa now, it, uh, you know, I, I'll have a, a pretty successful route. Jen's going to have a less attractive one, although she can use Quick Recovery to get her legendary guy back. So she can, boom, have three pilots right away. So Jen is, but Jen is going to have to do some logistics, one, two, to be able to get some more fuel to go anywhere because she doesn't have hardly any fuel at all. So that would be the situation at the start of the third round um, if Jen had been smart and not gotten herself killed but instead got a legendary. And what continues, you know, we continue to push over here and eventually somebody is brave enough to cross the Atlantic, which requires crossing two lines. So from uh, Dukar to Natal would require a plane that can cross two lines. From um, you know, Tangier to Natal would require a plane that can cross three lines. But, and now, only experienced and legendary pilots can make it over here into South America. But, um, you know, you start opening up lots of really, you know, here, you know, here's some more lucrative. Two passengers for another gold and more gold. And, um, oh, yeah, landing here. Well, this is kind of nice. You get two free fuel for having landed here. And um, ultimately trying to make it to La Paz where first player to get here can actually score a diamond, which is worth, what is that, 12 points, I think, is the first player to get to La Paz. And we keep going round after round until somebody has one diamond, um, one platinum, three gold. And now here's the interesting thing. The, um, Jen has three gold here now. If Jen were able to make this delivery again that she's been making so often, and she got another gold, you can see there's no place for her to put the gold. So what she has to do is, before she can take this new gold, she has to convert these three golds into one platinum. And then she's got room for her gold again. So you have this interesting thing, this kind of like uh, traffic jam as you're trying to score points. Because you can um, upgrade, you can convert your currencies up, but you can't convert down. And sometimes there are situations where you might not take all the points you can get because you don't want to fill up a space up above yet because if you fill up all those spaces, you might not be able to grab points from some other lucrative contract. So that's a really interesting element of the game too. But um, you know, ultimately, once somebody has four bronze, three gold, one platinum and one diamond. And you can get a diamond either by a La Paz or by getting two platinums and then converting them into a diamond, then you'd have to get another platinum. So when somebody can score all these points or when the sixth round is over, that triggers the end of the game. And it's a long game, but man, things start getting really tense because also the weather crossing the Andes, well, when you know, I just happened to find the nice one, but you know, there are some very nasty things that can happen to you as you try to cross the Andes. Um, all kinds of bad stuff. So uh, the game just gets tenser and tenser, and the race never ends. You are always, you know, as you're, as you know, because if I ever try, uh, this round I try to, to take a record, I could hopscotch over Jen and pay two minus two. So this would be free. I'd get a better ship plus this other ship, and I would take the bonus away from Jen. But then she could hopscotch over me and grab two points in the better ship. And um, ultimately, oh, by the way, the other thing, to cross the Andes, you have to have a plane that, ha that can cross the Andes or you have to have this upgrade. So to be able to make it into these last places, you have to have very specific aircraft that can make it over the Andes into these red zones. But as you can see, there's a whole bunch of platinum for being the first player to do deliveries over here. So there can be some very, very huge late game point swings as player, if you know, players kind of eschew. You know, Jen and I, we've been like, um, you know, fighting over small pickings over here. But the sooner we get over here, we can start getting into some really, really heavy point making. But that, folks, is the Air Apostle. If you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit the button now on screen in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.